from Berlin, Germany, it's theCUBE. Covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Hello and welcome to theCUBE on day two of DataWorks Summit 2018 from Berlin. It's been a great show so far. We have just completed the day two keynote and um, in just a moment I'll bring you up to speed on the major points uh, and uh, presentations from that. Um, it's been a great conference, uh, fairly well attended here. It's uh, the hallway chatter and discussion's been great. Um, the breakouts have been stimulating. Uh, for me, the takeaway is the fact that Hortonworks, the uh, show host, has uh, uh, announced yesterday at uh, the keynote, uh, Scott Now, the CTO of Hortonworks, announced Data Steward Studio, DSS, they call it, part of the uh, data plane, Hortonworks data plane uh, services uh, portfolio. And it could not be more timely, Data Steward Studio, because we are now five weeks away from GDPR, that's the General Data Protection Regulation, uh, becoming the law of the land, and when I say the land, the EU, but really any company that operates in the uh, EU, and that includes many US-based and APAC-based and other companies, uh, will need to comply with the uh, GDPR as of May 25th and ongoing uh, it, in terms of protecting the personal data of EU citizens. Um, and that means a lot of different things. Data Steward Studio announced yesterday was demoed today uh, by Hortonworks and it was a really excellent demo and showed that it's uh, a powerful solution uh, for a number of things that are at the core of GDPR compliance. Um, the demo covered uh, the uh, capability of, of the solution to uh, discover and inventory personal data uh, within a distributed uh, data lake or enterprise data environment, number one. Number two, the ability of the solution to centralize consent, provide a consent portal essentially, that uh, data subjects can use then to review the data that's kept on them to make fine-grained consents or withdraw consents for use uh, in profiling of their, of, their, of their data that they own. Um, and then number three, uh, the, the show, they demonstrated the capability of the solution then to execute the, uh, the data subject to people's requests in, in terms of the handling of their personal data. The three main points in terms of enabling, um, you know, bringing, giving, adding the teeth to enforce uh, GDPR in an operational setting in any company that uh, uh, is, needs to comply with GDPR. So, what we're going to see, I believe, going forward in the, um, really in the, in the whole global economy and in the big data space is that Hortonworks and others in the data lake uh, industry, and there's many others, uh, are going to need to roll out similar capabilities in their portfolios because their customers are absolutely going to demand it. In fact, the deadline is fast approaching. It's only five weeks away. One of the interesting takeaways from the, um, from the, uh, the, the keynote this morning uh, was the fact that John Kreisa, the VP for marketing at Hortonworks did a, uh, a quick survey of those in the audience, a poll, uh, asking how ready they are to comply with GDPR as of May 25th. And uh, it was a bit eye-opening, I wasn't surprised, but I think it was 19 or 20 percent, I don't have the numbers in front of me, said that they won't be ready to comply. I believe it was something where between 20 and 30 percent said they will be able to comply. Um, about 40 percent, I'm uh, don't quote me on that. I'm, uh, but a fair uh, plurality said that they're they're preparing. So that you know, indicates that they're not entirely 100 percent sure that they will be able to comply 100 percent to the letter of the law as of May 25th. And I think that's probably accurate um, in terms of ballpark uh, figures. I think there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of companies, users racing for compliance by that date. Um, and so really GDPR is the, definitely the headline banner umbrella story around this event and really around the big data community worldwide right now in terms of enterprise investments and the needed compliance software and services and capabilities uh, needed to comply with GDPR. 
that was important. Um, that wasn't the only um, uh, thing that was covered in not only the keynotes, but in the, uh, in the sessions here so far. AI, clearly AI and machine learning are, are hot themes in terms of the innovation side of big data. There's compliance, there's GDPR, but really innovation in terms of what enterprises are doing with their data, with their analytics, they're building more and more AI and embedding that in conversational UIs and chat bots, and they're embedding AI in all manner of e-commerce applications, internal applications in terms of search, um, as, as well as things like face recognition and voice recognition and so forth and so on. So what we've seen um, in, in, so here at the show is what, what I've been seeing for quite some time is that more of the actual developers who are working with big data are the data scientists of the world and more of the traditional coders are getting up to speed very rapidly on the new state of the art for building machine learning, deep learning, AI, natural language processing into their applications. Uh, that said, so Hortonworks has become a fairly substantial player in the machine learning space. Um, in fact, you know, really across their portfolio, and many of the discussions here I've seen shows that everybody's buzzing about getting up to speed on frameworks for, for building and deploying um, and iterating and refining machine learning models in operational environments. Um, that, so that's a, definitely a hot theme. And so there was an AI presentation this morning um, from the first gentleman that, that came on that laid out the broad parameters of uh, what, uh, what the developers are, are doing and looking to do with data that they maintain in their lakes, training data um, to both build the models and, and uh, train them and deploy them. So uh, that was also something I expected and, um, and it's good to see at DataWorks Summit that there's a substantial focus on that in addition, of course, to GDPR and, com and compliance. Um, you know, it's been about seven years now since Hortonworks was essentially spun off of Yahoo. Um, it's been, I think it's what, three years or so since they went IPO. Um, and what I can see is that they're making great progress in terms of their, their growth, in terms of not just the finances, uh, but their customer acquisition and their deal size, and also customer satisfaction. I get a sense from talking to uh, many of the attendees at this event is that Hortonworks has become a fairly blue chip vendor, that they're really in many ways uh, 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 continuing to grow their footprint uh, of, of Hortonworks products and services and those are their partners, such as IBM. And from what I can see, the uh, everybody was wrapped with attention around Data Steward Studio and I, I sensed um, sort of a sigh of relief that it looks like a fairly good solution and um, so I, 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 I have no doubt that a fair number of those in this hall right now are probably, as we, as we say in the US, probably kicking the tires of DSS and um, probably going to expedite their, um, their adoption of it. So with that said, um, we have day two here. So what we're going to have is um, Alan Gates, one of the founders of Hortonworks, coming on um, in just a few minutes. And I'll be interviewing him, asking him about the uh, vibrancy and the health of the community, uh, the Hortonworks ecosystem, uh, 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 developers, partners, and so forth, as well as, of course, the open source communities for Hadoop and uh, Ranger and uh, Atlas and so forth, the, uh, the growing uh, stack of open source code upon which Hortonworks has built their substantial portfolio of solutions. Um, following him, we'll have John Kreisa, the VP for Marketing. And I'm going to ask John to give us uh, an update on uh, really the, the sort of the health of Hortonworks as a business in terms of the reach out to the community, in terms of uh, their, their, their messaging, obviously, and, uh, uh, and uh, have him really position Hortonworks in the community in terms of who do they see, who does he see them competing with, what, what segments is Hortonworks in now? The whole Hadoop segment, um, increasingly, um, uh, uh, Hadoop is there, it's the foundation. The word is not invoked um, in, in, in the context of discussions of Hortonworks as much now as it was in the past. And the same thing for, say, Cloudera, one of their closest to traditional uh, rivals, uh, closest in the sense that people associate them. I was at the Cloudera Analyst event the, uh, the other week in Santa Monica, California. It was the same thing. I think both of these vendors are on a similar path. 
become fairly substantial data warehousing and data governance uh, suppliers to the, the enterprises of the world that have traditionally gone with the likes of IBM and Oracle and SAP and so forth. So I think their um, Hortonworks is, is definitely evolved into a, a far more diversified solution provider than people realize. And that's really um, one of the takeaways from, from DataWorks Summit. Uh, with that said, um, this is Jim Kabilis. I'm the uh, lead analyst, I should have said that at the outset. I'm the lead analyst at SiliconANGLE's uh, Media's uh, Wikibon team focused on big data analytics. I'm your host this week on theCUBE at DataWorks Summit Berlin. And um, I'll close off this segment and we'll get ready to talk to the uh, Hortonworks and IBM uh, personnel. And there's, and there's a gentleman from Accenture on as well. Uh, today on theCUBE here at DataWorks Summit Berlin.